Have you ever wished you could manipulate any situation to your advantage? Well, you're in luck because today we're sharing part two of our series on tricks to do just that. In part one, we explored some fascinating psychological hacks that can help you navigate the world more smoothly. Today, we're going to delve deeper, sharing more tricks that can help you subtly influence situations and people around you. So, without further ado, let's dive into the first trick. Starting off, our first trick is about handling disagreements more effectively. Imagine you're faced with a viewpoint that doesn't sit well with you. Instead of going into debate mode instantly, try validating the viewpoint first, then gently slide in your own perspective. This approach is rooted in the psychology of validation. By showing understanding, you create an environment of mutual respect and open-mindedness. This often leads to a positive conclusion to the interaction, even if you both continue to disagree. Now, let's talk about a clever way to extract information. Let's say you've forgotten the name of a person or thing. The trick here is to ask a question with incorrect information. For example, you might ask, is Kathy still the manager at the restaurant? Or is the door code still 7,752? Your conversation partner will naturally want to correct the misinformation. And voila, you have the accurate information you were seeking. This trick works because people generally have an innate desire to correct inaccuracies, especially if they know the right answer. Our third trick is a twist on expressing gratitude. Suppose you've kept someone waiting. Instead of saying, sorry to keep you waiting, try saying, thank you for being patient. This simple shift in language is surprisingly powerful. By thanking someone for a trait you want them to display, you're more likely to see that behavior from them. It's a bit like a self-fulfilling prophecy. When you express gratitude for someone's patience, they're more likely to act patiently, even if they were feeling frustrated before. Isn't it fascinating how our words and actions can influence others? Let's move on to the next set of tricks. Our next trick is about how to deal with questions and responses. Let's dive right in. Trick number four is all about timing. Picture this, you ask someone a question and their immediate response is, what? Instead of quickly repeating your question, give them a few seconds. More often than not, they heard you the first time. They just needed a moment to process your words. This little pause can make a world of difference as it allows the other person to gather their thoughts and respond more accurately. Moving on to trick number five. Have you ever bumped into someone you know in public and dreaded the impending small talk? Here's a simple solution. Tell them exactly where you're going and why. Then ask them the same thing. Once they answer, you can gracefully exit the conversation with, well, I won't keep you longer then, have a good day. This method is a polite and effective way to avoid lingering in an unwanted conversation without seeming rude. Now for our sixth trick, let's delve into the realm of group dynamics. If you're curious about who someone favors in a gathering, pay attention to who they look at when someone cracks a joke. People tend to glance at their favorite person while laughing. This subconscious action can reveal quite a bit about their relationships and preferences within the group. So, what's the psychology behind these tricks? Well, the first is about patience and understanding. When people feel they have the time to respond, they're more likely to engage in meaningful communication. The second trick is about control and respect. By stating your intentions and showing interest in theirs, you maintain control of the situation while respecting their time. The third trick is about attention and connection. Observing subtle cues can give you valuable insights into how people relate to each other. These tricks are not only handy, they're also interesting insights into human behavior. Let's see what's next. Our seventh trick is about how to ask for things more effectively. When you want something done, it's best to be direct and personal. If you direct your concerns toward a specific person instead of a general group, they're more likely to comply. This is because it creates a sense of responsibility and accountability. When a task is addressed to everyone, it's easy for individuals to assume that someone else will take care of it. But when you single out a person, they feel a direct obligation to act. Moving on to trick number eight. Have you ever tried to stop someone's hiccups? Next time ask them to prove they have hiccups. The pressure to perform under scrutiny often makes the hiccups disappear. It's a psychological phenomenon known as demand characteristics. When people know they're being observed, they unknowingly alter their behavior. In this case, the focus on the hiccups and the expectation to prove it can disrupt the hiccup pattern. And for our ninth trick, let's talk about apologies. When someone apologizes, instead of saying it's okay, try saying thank you for apologizing. This response does two things. First, it validates the person's effort to make amends. Second, 
It avoids brushing off the issue and opens the door for further communication. Saying it's okay might imply that their actions didn't have an impact, which can hinder growth and understanding. On the other hand, acknowledging the apology shows that you value their recognition of the mistake. These three tricks have a common thread. They all play on the psychology of directness and accountability. Whether you're asking someone to do something, challenging a physical response, or navigating an apology, the direct approach can often yield better results. It encourages transparency, responsibility, and open communication. As you can see, a little bit of psychology can go a long way. Let's move on to the final set of tricks. Entering the final phase, our 10th trick is about how to manage children's behavior. Instead of instructing them not to do something, guide them towards an alternative action. For instance, if a child is playing with a fragile vase, instead of saying, don't touch that, you could say, why don't you play with these blocks instead? This approach diverts their attention from the undesirable activity and refocuses it on a more suitable one. This trick works because children are naturally curious and easily distracted. By suggesting an alternative, you are satisfying their curiosity and steering them towards safer, more appropriate behavior. Moving on to the 11th trick, if you want your ideas to be taken more seriously by someone who typically dismisses them, borrow some credibility. Instead of claiming the ideas as your own, you could say that successful people or companies like Bill Gates or Tesla use these strategies. To make it more effective, you can even explain how these ideas can be applied to their current situation. This tactic works because people are more likely to accept ideas that have already been proven successful, especially if they come from someone they admire or respect. Lastly, the twelfth trick is about getting your ideas accepted by making the other person feel like it was their idea. If you want someone to go along with one of your suggestions, lead them to believe they came up with it. You could say something like, I swear you mentioned this in one of our chats. This works because people are naturally more inclined to support ideas they believe they conceived. It leverages their ownership bias, which is the tendency for people to value their own ideas and creations more highly than others. These tricks offer a fascinating glimpse into how our minds work. They illustrate how understanding psychology can be used to influence situations subtly and ethically. Now let's wrap things up. So there you have it, a dozen more tricks to manipulate any situation to your advantage. From the power of validation and strategic questioning to the subtle art of suggestion, these techniques offer a practical guide to navigating a variety of social and personal situations. We've explored the power of positive reinforcement, the art of asking the right questions, and the use of strategic misdirection. We've also looked at ways to encourage others to act in accordance with our words and how to deftly steer conversations to avoid awkwardness or to gain valuable information. In addition, we've delved into the power of directness and personalization when making requests, the art of tactful acknowledgement and the value of providing alternative actions. We've also touched upon the power of association, the art of suggestion, and the importance of maintaining a positive demeanor. Moreover, we've discussed the importance of framing questions to encourage participation, the value of constructing non-confrontational excuses, and the utility of using unusual cues to aid memory. Finally, we've considered the art of strategic request escalation, which can make our actual desires seem more reasonable. These tricks are not about deceiving or misleading others, but about understanding human psychology and using this knowledge to create more effective, harmonious interactions. Remember, these tricks are tools. Use them wisely and respectfully. Until next time, keep observing, learning, and growing.